everyone, I'm Noreen and welcome to my garden. And today I'm going to show you how I plant tomatoes using Epsom salts, fertilizer, and rock phosphate. So let's see how we do this. Now, you recall that we talked about the things that I like to use in my garden, and these are three things I would never be without. These are things that I always use when I put a plant into the ground or into a pot, into dirt. It gives it the best possible um, future. It gives it the best probability that it will produce great fruit and, and be really good for you over the course of your gardening period, and in the end, give you fabulous harvest. So. I know that most of you probably know how to do this, but for those of you who've never seen it done, I have gone to my local nursery and they, uh, toward the end of the season, well, when it's essentially too late to plant in my area, they will put their plants on clearance just like anywhere else. And that's the best time to go because all the vegetable plants were half price. So I know for a fact that I have a really long growing season and I'm going to use them. So I have a little flat here of three. And this is, um, this is a tomato red bounty. This is a virus resistant strain. And I have three planted that I planted, oh, earlier in the season. Tone, the first thing I'm putting in the hole is the fertilizer, but there's no order that you have to put it in specifically. Just put about a tablespoon each of the tomato tone, the Epsom salts, especially with tomatoes, do not forget the Epsom salts or the rock phosphate. And you'll see that I'm not really measuring as much as I'm just tossing it in there. Just a little bit, you don't need a ton. And you can see how root bound these little seedlings have gotten. So just give it a mush, all right? Loosen up some of those roots. Here, I'll do it here. And then toss the dirt back in around it, press it down, and I'm gonna yank out several of these stems. Rearrange the mulch on top. And then at this point, if you want to put a cage on here, you can, and I probably will, but I have to go buy some more cages. Do you see here these tiny little shoots? Pull those off. If you put it in the ground deep enough, anywhere you pull the stem or branch off is going to become a root, and that's a good thing. All right, so we're giving your, your plant an excellent root structure. We're giving it a great head start. And you know, I have a lot of mulch here in my beds and that's how you want it. But listen, you gotta make sure that you push down on the dirt after you get it in there so that you eliminate any air pockets. Okay. And then you move all your stuff out of the way. And the last most important thing you must do is give this a, a really good drink. And here, because I didn't pull off enough here. You don't want any leaves to be touching the ground because this allows for disease to spread. It also allows for bugs to climb up and uh, have uh, more ease of access to your plant. And you don't want that. Also, when I got a lot of these plants, I got several peppers, some tomatoes, and I got some eggplant and some cucumbers. I spent $16 for 16 plants. So that really kind of rounds out my garden for the year. But a lot of them had fruit already on them. You have to pull it off. If you want your plant to grow successfully, you have to really be barbaric and it will hurt. <laughs> but you have to, have to, have to pull any blooms. You have to pull any fruit that's already come onto it off. Otherwise your plant is going to focus all of its energy on growing that fruit and you don't want that. You want these plants to grow really big before they start to produce fruit. So you want to water in really well. And you see, I didn't 
There was no rhyme or reason to where I stuck my holes or anything. Just get them in the ground. Let nature do the rest. Okay? And when you water them, focus on each stem. And then I, I actually forgot. I do like to, when I'm planting tomatoes especially, but all plants, I do like to give it a handful of the organic fertilizer right on top of the soil because this will give it an extra boost, water that in because that's the only way that the fertilizer gets down into the soil and will help to feed the roots. And I'm going to come back in about a week and I'm going to show you what these plants look like. That rock phosphate is going to work its magic and it's going to do amazing things. And these plants are going to be a foot taller in a week, I guarantee you. I'm going to show you. I have some of these tomato red bounty in another bed that I planted last month in, oh, mid-May. So it's been about six weeks. And I'm going to show you what they look like right now. So let's go for a walk, honey. These are the same strain, Tomato Red Bounty, and they are about three feet tall, at least, now. And these were much smaller than the seedlings I just put in the ground. So they grow very quickly when you take care of them properly. That one is not the same strain. That, that one on the end is a sweet 100, but this is the same strain. It's already starting to set fruit. Uh, if it's if it shows uh, signs of setting fruit any sooner, I pull off the blossoms. I know that that's a hard thing for some of us who are new to gardening to do, but in the end, you are going to help your plant produce a stronger stem and cell structure before it starts to produce the fruit. So that is how you plant properly. Tomatoes especially, I do the same thing with just about everything I put in the ground. I use rock phosphate, Epsom salt, which is a calcium or magnesium supplement, as well as the fertilizer. In every hole that I dig, in every plant that I put in, I use those things. So that's how you should do it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I'll see ya.